it out. Phil from New York Rocks. We're here with Mickey Burns from Profiles. There Phil, he is. Always a play. I love your show. Oh, I love New York Rocks. <laughs> I've been watching it in a long time, and it's always entertaining. Oh, thank you very much. I'm my, flattered. But I'm play. flattered about your, your suit. You look beautiful. Well, yeah, we were interviewing today, you know, and uh, putting out more episodes of Profiles, and then we do uh, the opens and closes on the streets of New York. A lot of work. But we love doing it. It's a passion. Uh, we'll be celebrating our 400th episode this summer. I was going to say how many years, not 400 years, but a long well, time. Go we, ahead. We started on NYC Media in the fall of 2003. So it's been quite a ride. Did you start in the business about what, about 20, 25 years? I would say several years before that. First at Fox Television. Then I worked on uh, Time Warner for a period of time. And I've had my home now at NYC Media for 14 years. And the first interview that you had done, tell everybody. <laughs> That's a tough question. Now you're, now you're testing my gray matter. But I would think, I think the first one was Chuck Mangione when he was uh, performing at Snug Harbor Cultural Center a concert back in like 19, I guess, 99. And after that, the second one I think was uh, Isaac Hayes, then Benny King. Darlene Love and Julie Budd. Those were the first five. And my memory is a little foggy after that. I remember when you were doing stuff down at the Sugar Bar with Ashley and Simpson. Oh, that was the greatest was experience. That, that, that was the best. That's when I first met you, actually. Yeah, right? about five, six years into the show, right. we met Nick and Val from Ashley and Simpson Sugar Bar on 72nd Street. And they invited me up to interview. Dr. Maya Angelou first, and second, Roberta Flack. So we became close friends with them, and they said, well, why don't you do the show here? And I'll tell you, it, it was a great place because it's on 72nd Street and Broadway. Actually, I did camera for you one time you with did, Miss, right? America. Miss America. <laughs> Miss America. Yeah. Yes, you get all the good jobs, Phil. Uh, but yeah, so we did, I, I would say, 100 episodes from Ashford and Simpsons. And the celebrity guests loved it because they were... They were starstruck in meeting Nick and Val. So it's a crazy world, but uh, it was a great home for a long time. We miss Nick. And I would say you're an icon in Staten Island because you guys operate still from Staten Island. You're a Staten Island, all right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a Staten Island guy and grew up there, went to school there. And now we have an office right by the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, so, yeah. Culture Center. Yeah, yeah, it's not Harbor. Uh, but, you know, I'll always be a Staten Island guy, and uh, I take a lot of pride in being part of that community. Well, I'm a Staten Island guy, but I was from Brooklyn, yeah. but I came to Staten Island, so I've been there for like 50 some odd years. Right. I don't wanna, you know, right. And why are we here tonight, Bill? Why well, we we're tonight? here because Carmine Apiece right. has a, a book, a book he's coming out, what it's called, yeah. Stick It. I know. He's a drummer, you know, a drummer. I, own, I had to read the book because uh, he was on a guest on Profiles a couple of weeks ago. Excellent drama. Well, like legendary. I mean, he played with Vanilla Fudge. He toured for several years with, uh, uh, do you think I'm sexy, Rod Stewart? Stewart. Uh, Cactus, Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, have they found him yet, Ozzy Osbourne? No, he's still you know, among the missing. <laughs> he's, he's lingering about. He hasn't decided to go home yet. But, but Carmine is one of those iconic drummers from that period of time in the 70s and 80s. Little known is that he was very close friends with Jimi Hendrix when they were both making $50 a night in the clubs on the west side up near the Beacon Theater. Uh, so he knew Jimi before he was Jimi Hendrix. At that time, I think he was Jimi James. And then Jimi had to go to uh, London, and then he hit a big... Of course, Carmine hit it big with Vanilla Fudge yeah. with that classic remake of Keep Me Hanging On. Keep me hang you Keep Me Hanging On, keep which, hanging which on. was a remake of Diana Ross's big hit. Good thing I didn't mess that up. <laughs> <laughs> but done with a lot of hard rock yeah. feel yeah. as opposed to... Because he was a little bit before my time. Because if yeah. you know, he came up in the 60s. And yeah. then when he, he started playing with Cactus, that was like 70s early 70s yes, yes. I started getting into music in uh, during 1973 right, with right. like Kiss and then uh, Elton John and um, right. Jim Croce and uh, Steve Miller stuff like that right. but Carmine is a is in a pioneer in many respects and as a drummer 
and has been is not only looked up to but is respected and idolized by a whole legion of drummers that follow so he he really is a, a heralded drummer and an iconic one in the in show business and it's a shame because uh, he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but even though he should be, and let's, let's say, I was speaking about it before to somebody, uh, a Drummer's Hall of Fame, they should have a Rock and Roll Drummer's Hall of Fame, a Rock and Roll Guitarist Hall of Fame. Right. And not only that, I mean, he went, when he was with Vanilla Fudge, they were a, a groundbreaking rock band back in the 60s. In the book, he writes about the fact George Harrison of the Beatles used to take the Vanilla Fudge's pre, uh, do, uh, first album to parties with him because it was such a party album. And the Fudge, too. If you have Vanilla Fudge, that's good. So you're going to take it to the party. Everybody's going to want Vanilla Fudge, right? I mean, come on. Who don't like Vanilla Fudge? And recently, <laughs> they just did a, uh, an appearance on the, the Jimmy Fallon show, and they sounded great. Right, right. Like, no time had passed at all. <laughs> so he's still looking good. He he's takes still... care of himself, and he's got great energy. Yes. He's, he finally found the right woman. I know he's married. The radio chick. <laughs> he was the radio chick. He was, go. Yeah, he was married, married, he was married a few, couple times. Finally oh. found true love. Oh, no. yeah. True love. Right. And we wish him nothing but happiness. Yeah, yeah. She's a great gal. I know her for a while because she was on the radio. It was a radio chick. Yes. Leslie Go. And, and tonight yeah. is, a, is his book, uh, I guess. It's his night. His it's night. his night, right? Yeah, and I was just here. talking to Police Commissioner uh, Kelly. Former, uh, Kelly, and he says, you come here much? I said, about as much as you. So it's uh, our first time for both of wow. us here at the cutting room. But it's a great club, and uh, we're having a ball. Thank you. Thank you for speaking with me. Best of luck with Profiles. Yep. And you're a great guy. I and, know you. And, Phil, keep New York Give the love. Going. You got keep a lot the of love. Fans. You got a lot of fans keep out Keep the there. love. Tell Gary from Quest Media, keep in the love. <laughs> keep in the love. And you got to do that. New York rocks, baby. Yeah, yeah. Who rocks better <laughs> than New York? Nobody. Thanks, we rock the best. Thanks, Phil. There you go.